by studying nanotechnology and nanomechanical technology at small forces, we can try to understand how materials behave in very, very small volumes. We are trying to work at length scales that are less than one thousandth to one ten thousandth of the diameter of the human hair. And uh, that's really challenging. So in biology, for example, we can use that to study cell adhesion, forces between different chemicals and surfaces of cells. We can make a connection between the measurements that we make at very, very small length scales uh, to the behavior of materials and surfaces and biological cells and molecules and hopefully connect that to human health and diseases. One of the instruments you'll see in the nano lab is a nano indenter. And the nano indenter tries to help us understand how surfaces behave. It entails a sharp object made of diamond and it pushes the sharp object into a surface. The surface can be the surface of a, an engineering material, it can be a polymer, it can be a biological sample. And from the way in which the forces and displacements are measured at the surface, you can try to understand how surfaces behave. Now through a series of modeling and the theory, we can try to interpret how these forces and deformation at the surface translate into properties of materials. So once we know that, we can design new materials, new surfaces. The experimental capabilities uh, are so new that only in the last five years we've been able to push the limits of this technology to the extent that we've been able to do, uh, we, we are doing at the present time. At the same time, there is a revolution in computer hardware and software. So we can do modeling and simulations of these experiments to a level of sophistication that we could not have done just a few years ago. It's a wonderful time to be doing experiments and simulations in nanotechnology.